And I have got quotes in here that are out there that, for some reason, nobody's running with. Carol Browner gave it. She's the energy and climate czar who had a phony position, that position created for her, because she could never achieve Senate confirmation, and she would cause great political havoc, of course, having been a commissioner for the Socialist International, if Obama tried to get her uh, confirmed. She was put into this phony position to lord over cabinet officials, and she gave an interview to U.S. News in March of last year in which she said, it's their objective to get to the point where the electric utilities hold back power from you so that you'll still be able to cool your home, just not as much as you would like. Meaning what, Alex? As much as they would like. They're admitting it. Stay there. This is incredible. Let's come back and talk about the control freak panopticon. And Texas, I already had it put into my office. That I couldn't say no. California, they're going to remote control your thermostat. They're going to run everything and surveil you. We'll be back with our guest. And again, I research this constantly. Everything he's saying is on record. That's uh, he, He's bringing up Carol Browner. He's going to go over more of these, like, we'll control your thermostat. We'll run your life. We're your God. What about Elena Kagan? Over and over again saying, if we don't like your speech, it's banned. Or Cass Sunstein. Or we're going to get your guns. Or uh, the White House science czar. We're going to put stuff in the water to sterilize you. I mean, folks... I don't just say this. I have their white papers. Here's Elena Kagan, University of Chicago Law Review. I mean, I've got, I've got the White House Science Czar's own textbook right here. These people, these people are in league with Hitler and Stalin. And I don't say that for rhetoric. I, well, let me go back to my guest, Chris. You, you, you started reading her quotes. It's just, it's like a bad dream. I mean, how can these people be such dirtbags, so obviously evil, and, and, and such a threat to everybody? I mean, most people I know with money are fleeing the country. Go ahead. Well, they have this, the one thing that's never changed is their utopian vision, dystopian, yes, me, but this idea that they will organize society. What changes is their vehicle. What's the excuse? What's the latest victim that has to be rescued from the horrors of individual liberty? And it was, the, of course, the worker, and the worker threw off those shackles, so it became the environment, which can't speak back. Wealthier is healthier, wealthier is cleaner. They have to know this, but they really hate wealth. It's just the excuse, the latest excuse. Freedom brings wealth, so they attack your freedom. How badly? Well, all right, the president has given some speeches that in isolation just seem weird. He said, of course, under my plan of a cap-and-trade system, electricity prices would necessarily skyrocket. He said he would use it to bankrupt industries he didn't like. His quote was, coal, you know, natural gas, whatever the industries. Then he admitted it would be passed on to the consumer, and he said, and this will also raise billions of dollars. Well, in the book, I detail how I used FOIA to get Treasury documents that say there was a, there was a memo written six days after Obama was elected in which they said uh, he wants to do this. Here's what we can do. And under the justification paragraph, they wrote uh, revenues. This will raise, quote, possibly up to several percentage points of GDP, parentheses, i.e., uh, the equivalent of the corporate income tax rate well, that, or corporate income tax. The corporate income tax, among the highest in the world, raises $400 billion per year. The biggest tax increase in our history to pay off World War II, which was an expiring tax, in cost of dollars is $107 billion per year. So we're talking about a spectacular amount of money. But they don't just want to steal your money. They want to steal your freedoms. He gave another speech in which he said, you can't eat what you want, drive what you want, or put your thermostat where you want. The specific quote was, we can't eat as much as we want, drive our SUVs, and keep our thermostats at 72 degrees at all times and expect that other countries are just going to say, okay, well, I didn't ask, okay, but B, what is the President of the United States doing obsessing about how much I can eat, what I can drive, and where I can put my thermostat? Well, he's also playing us off against other countries and invoking hatred of us, just like he had Calderon here last week saying, ban all our semi-automatic rifles and handguns. This is the Socialist International. This is their mode. Well, sovereignty is not a big thing to them. Uh, they do believe that one way to skin this cat is through global governance is not the same as a global government, though the global governance crowd would, of course, love that. I'm just saying he's a big proponent of global governance. What I'd like to do, if we can stay when I come back, is talk about uh, the way they want to control your thermostat, and you're not going to believe the documents that someone slipped me. But the, he, the Guardian in the U.K., Old Red herself, reported that the Obama administration 
was briefing European diplomats before Copenhagen that failed globe, thank goodness. Oh, yeah, no, no, they're going to tax you for any amount, and then they say in peak times they're going to control it. That's actually, they're announcing that in California. Start getting into it right now. Well, okay, well, uh, they want to use these things called smart meters. Smart meters put the meat on the bones of what Carol Browner said when she said, we want to get to a system whereby the utility holds back power from you. Why would a utility hold back power from you? They're in the business of selling you power. Because there's physical scarcity, which this crowd is arranging, as I detail in the book, and because they've got a requirement that they hold back power from you. So the state is going to use the utility, according to the energy czar, to decide. She said, you'll still be able to cool your home, just not as much as you would like, which means just as much as they would like. Well, it turns out the assistant secretary of energy for energy efficiency, a woman who was Al Gore's CEO before she took this job, making $325,000 a year as a green pressure group CEO, she divested herself of utility stocks because, of course, the appearances would be terrible if she didn't. But someone slipped me her financial disclosure documents, and guess what? She held on to a half million dollars in a smart meter company. Oh! Said, yeah, how about that? Assistant Secretary of Energy for Energy Efficiency in charge of getting the smart meter mandate in that Carol Browner says is the way that you can't control your thermostat, the state will. And we've got a woman who held on to between $265,000 and $550,000 of smart meter company stock in addition to another green cut jobs company, her husband. It's department. incredible. Stay there. Folks, th th this is why I get angry. And you should be angry, too. They're openly saying they're going to decide what temp your house is. Naked body scanners aren't enough. All their taxes aren't enough. Nothing is enough for these people. We're going back to Christopher Horner right now. New book, Power Grab, How Obama's Green Policies Will Steal Your Freedom and Bankrupt America. But Matt Ryan, for years, uh, who's one of the TV slash radio board ops and producers, uh, he worked at Austin Energy. And, of course, he's talked about the meetings where they'd point out that the illegal aliens wouldn't pay their power bill. The city just said, let them have free power. Uh, I've talked to Austin cops. They're ordered to let them go, DWI. That's a separate issue, though. But I walked out during the break, and I said, well, the city didn't ask us here at our business. They came and stuck the new smart thermostat on last year. And in the brochure, it said, well, since your thermostat was free, businesses don't have an option, uh, you know, free, taxpayer paid for it, uh, we may turn your heat down in the winter or your cool, you know, uh, up in the summer uh, if we're having problems supplying power. Now, that was the old Enron scam where they got caught to create artificial scarcity, where they were showing congressmen and the state legislature fake computer trades on computers. They were just making up the price, and their internal studies showed if we double or triple prices or even turn power off, that creates the perception that it's scarce. And now they're doing it with the water, with power. This green movement is about raping you. But I briefly wanted Matt Ryan here on air. I mean, plus we can dig up the Austin Energy contract says it. I mean, I'd read this, but he, he goes, no, you're absolutely correct. Austin already has this. They already control this building's thermostat. I am under g these criminals' control. Matt Ryan, tell folks. Right. These programmable thermostats are one of the green initiatives uh, sponsored by Austin Energy. You call them up. They'll give you a free thermostat, a programmable thermostat. It'll work for you 24-7 uh, around the clock, except during what they call peak usage times, which uh, is a time period usually in the afternoon when they say, okay, well, there's a lot of people turning their ACs on. They can turn yours off. And they will turn yours off for usually about 15 minutes uh, during a day when they, they feel that they're having peak usage. And that's in the federal legislation to even control what what goes in air conditioners. Right. Just like your cell phone since 96 tracks you in real time, they're designing the Big Brother grid. But I want to tell you, with this business, we don't have a choice. Right. They are our lord. And I, they are our king. I can't tell you how many times I got a, I got a call from uh, an apartment tenant saying, why did y'all come out here and put this in? I do not want this meter in here. And it's their landlord that said, oh, programmable thermostats, that's a perk. We'll give it to all of our, our tenants. And whether they like it or not, and believe me, they would complain, they got an right. energy thermostat. I want to have you back and talk about this more in the future. I want to go back to Christopher Horner, but thank you for, for coming in and telling us. So, 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 Christopher Horner, here we are. I mean, I, I'm already under these people's control, and if they can naked body scan my kids to fly, if they can control the temperature in my office, I mean, literally, this is worse than the Soviet Union. What they're talking about is 
squeezing you at both ends. They're trying to ration the physical supply, create physical scarcity where there should not be any. Remember, the United States sits on the world's largest energy reserves. We don't have uh, physical scarcity that would lead to this sort of, in essence, micro brownout. But you're going to get to the larger point of brownouts because we're following the U.K.'s path of saying no coal, no nuclear, we'll just build offshore wind farms someday, and then you're going to see them obsessing about the fact when they get the Olympics, they're actually not going to have the electricity. But what you've got here is Browner is saying things like, okay, this is not just the smart meter that will tell us when you're using your energy. What I guess this Kathy's always also invested in with this company Landis and Gear, a Swiss smart meter company, half a million dollars worth of stock, um, and just wait till she succeeds in getting those mandated in one of the you know, biggest markets in the world. Uh, they're talking about also getting to the point, like Matt was discussing, whereby they can say, I'm sorry, you've been running your dishwasher too often, wrong time of day, clothes washer, sorry. Uh, Carol Browner sold it in this interview to U.S. News as a savings to the consumer, and I just want your listeners to know they're saving a fortune in India right now, in Haiti and all over the world, by not using energy.